Laserdisc? Well, I love Laserdiscs. Welcome to 5 Minutes of Retro, I'm Espen Craft. In the late 80s, I had brought some VHS movies from a place in Denmark, a, a video shop in Denmark. And through their ads, I was being made aware of Laserdiscs. And they had a player for sale. They sold a Pioneer CLD 1450 model, which I could import to Norway. And I ordered it, paid blood in VAT and custom fees. And the player itself was very expensive, about 10,000 Norwegian kroner at the time. Uh, but I got it home. And I had ordered a couple of discs as well. I think it was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and The Abyss and one more title, which name escapes me at the moment. But I brought that home. I put on that first disc. I think it was The Abyss. And I was blown away by the quality of the picture and the sound. So right then and there, I knew that laser discs would play a major part in my movie collecting from, from that day forward. I have to admit that even to this day, hearing these um, Laserdisc intro music themes from the different movie companies brings out all the nostalgic goosebumps. One of the things that had really started to take off when I got involved with Laserdiscs in the early 90s was the presentation of the movies in widescreen, preserving the original aspect ratio. And since our TVs were mostly square back in the day, that meant you had to do letterboxing, which meant black bars at the top and at the bottom of the screen. But to be able to see the movies, often for the first time on home video in their original aspect ratios, meant a lot. Up until this point, more often than not, the aspect ratio would be cropped off in a so-called pan and scan version on VHS and earlier releases of Laserdiscs, mostly. These days we think nothing of it, but back then this was huge. And of course, with Laserdiscs came the ability to have surround sound at home, digital audio. And as the format moved on during the 90s, you had discs with the Dolby Digital or DTS encoded onto them. That was in the later part of the 90s. In the beginning of the 90s, when I started out, you only had the Matrix encoded surround sound on the discs which basically meant you had stereo in the front and a pseudo stereo surround set up in the back with two speakers. What you just saw me on screen here was my setup for doing Dolby Digital AC3, which meant going out of the Laserdisc into a demodulator and into my receiver, which I can now set up to do a glorious Dolby Digital 5.1 in the later part of the 90s. One thing to be aware of is that with Laserdisc you often had the original theatrical audio mix encoded, which were often gone when the DVDs came and now later the Blu-rays etc. because movie companies had started doing new audio mixes of their movies. So uh, only on Laserdisc can you still listen to the original theatrical mixes. Another thing I really like about Laserdisc is the extra material you often had with different releases. Even though some of this extra material has crept up on YouTube in recent years, there's still a lot of extra material only available on these old Laserdisc releases. In Japan, where the Laserdisc format really took off and had about 10% of the market, you had loads of releases on Laserdisc with extra material, extra audio tracks, etc. that you couldn't find anywhere else. And a lot of Japanese Laserdisc releases are very collectible today and some of them bring good money. I don't have any particularly expensive myself, but I have a few uh, Japanese Laserdiscs and I really like the presentation of the Japanese Laserdiscs. And when it comes to watching Laserdisc, well, to me, the only way, uh, the proper way, is to watch it on a CRT TV, preferably a Sony Trinitron. Just as with retro gaming, you have to use a CRT TV to get the scan lines. 
I have to admit that I sold a lot of discs in the late 90s and early 2000s. I regret that deeply. So in recent years, I've had to rebuy a lot of the titles I had back then, simply because I found out I miss them so much. I really enjoy watching Laserdisc today. It always takes me back much more than any other format. And streaming is okay. I do that a lot myself, but... Uh, Watching it on Laserdisc, well, that's life, that's pure bliss in my opinion. Well, I hope you liked this little introduction to Laserdiscs and how it has impacted my life. Thanks for watching, I'm Espencroft and you're watching 5 Minutes of Retro. See you next time, cheers.